What's up guys, it's Mr. Stark. Today we're gonna to talk about the transformer. So, what exactly is a transformer? A transformer is nothing more than a, a set of coils that produce a magnetic field. And that magnetic field then creates this thing we call induction. And what we use these transformers are, are typically to take a higher voltage and step it down to a more lower usable voltage for some application in the field. In this particular instance, in this video, I have a 480 volt delta primary, and that 480 volts will then step that voltage down to three phase 208 slash 120 volts. A few things I want to show you about this transformer. Uh, once we've opened up the cover, you'll notice that the cover has a tapered top and that cover taper top would then go in to the top of this portion of the transformer and allow air to be circulated from the bottom. If you notice that the bottom of this transformer, uh, a couple things, it's raised off the floor and it's got uh, like a vent at the bottom and that allows air to, re, uh, to circulate from underneath the transformer and then kind of come out the top through that tapered, tapered top edge on the cover. Second thing, kind of important is to understand about transformers is when you get brand new ones although this one isn't this is far from new this is actually old I've had this donated to me years ago <clears throat> a lot of these transformers have these little cushions there's a little rubber grommet mount you can look deep inside there there's a little piece of rubber underneath because these things are heavy so that allows this thing to have a little kind of shock absorption if you will and uh, sometimes you have to actually adjust them from packaging when, when you open them up. Another thing about this transformer is we've got this uh, strapping and this strapping bonds the can, the outer portion of this transformer, which is metal. And of course, all normally not current carrying metal parts need to be bonded. And we have to understand when and where and in what application we can actually bond the metal casing to the grounded circuit conductor. So Article 250 in the code book talks about a separately derived system. A separately derived system is exactly that. It's almost like you're restarting the main service. So when we had the course installation of electrical services, we talked about that the main bonding jumper can only be at the service, that green screw. So if you had a subpanel, you'd have to take that out. Well, this is similar in a sense that we're taking power from the main service or some distribution of that service to feed this transformer. And when we do feed that, we have a couple of choices. We can then put the main bonding jumper in this transformer, in which case you'd have this bonding strap would go to uh, XO on this transformer, and that would connect the neutral to the grounding electrode conductor and or the equipment grounding conductor. It could be done there, and that would actually be called a system supply side bonding jumper. If you do it there, you cannot put that green screw in the panel after the secondary side of the transformer. Something to take note of. I might talk more about that when we get to the article and code to really specify that a little bit further. So what we're looking at here is more of a visual in this video. So the visual in this video shows I've got letters that mean something. So let's take a look at them in a closer view. You can see there's X3 right next to H3. There's H2, X2, H1, XO, which is neutral on the secondary, X1. So what does this mean for an electrician? X1, X2, and X3 are typically of the colors black, red, blue. And those stand for our lower voltage color scheme, which would be 208 slash 120, or the 240 volt uh, of the voltages. Those are the colors that we use in the field. That's not code. We have to identify the phases. But it doesn't tell you in the code book you have to use those colors, but that's kind of a trade practice. Then you have H1, H2, and H3. That is typically brown, orange, yellow. 
and that stands for 480 volts. Very important to understand that since you understand how you're wiring this transformer. So if I was to bring in 480 volts into this transformer, brown, orange, yellow, I would tie in the brown to H1, the orange to H2, and the uh, yellow to H3 <clears throat> in that order. If I was to then come off the secondary side of this transformer, I'd use black, red, blue. Black would go to X1, red would go to X2, and blue would go to X3, and white would go to XL. Something to take note of in this transformer too, you've got some tap configurations. If you look at this little diagram up here, it's just showing you how this coil is designed. So if you look at these numbers and the staggering of those little taps, that represents this coil. <clears throat> so here's a tap, 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 which represents this drawing right here. Same thing on the middle coil and same thing on the end coil. What you can do with that tap location is get a, a variable of voltages of the in-between, uh, you know, in-between voltages, which in, in this case, you know, you could adjust within 10 or 15 volts of what you need for your supply or your uh, or the load for the secondary. So kind of important to know that. <clears throat> Another thing that's uh, interesting to note, all transformers at the bottom have mounting holes and that's actually a manufacturer's requirement that these transformers be physically mounted in the field. You just can't sit them on the floor like this one is. It's got to be physically mounted. And if we take a step back if you look at the side, typically what we'd end up doing in the field is we'd come into the side of this transformer, maybe with the primary in this case, and you'd have a flexible connection. Usually we'd have a, uh, a green field is what we call it in a trade. The National Electrical Code Book calls it flexible metal conduit. And we, we would use that flexible connection because this is kind of a vibrating unit. It moves slightly and it's easier to kind of work the wires in. We would come down the wall with EMT and change over to Greenfield and then flex into the side of that. Manufacturer would suggest where you would drill those holes to come in with the primary. And that's probably exactly where that should have been because that's where the wire terminals are. And then we'd come out the secondary side, usually on a different side, we'd come out the secondary side with a new hole and we would feed whatever it, whatever it is that you're feeding, likely a panel board. If we take a step back and take a look at the cover, the cover tells you a lot. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this with my GoPro because the numbers are they're, uh, engraved and they're hard to see with the camera. But in either case, we're going to be doing the calcs in this course. And <clears throat> the calcs are based upon the KVA rating. So on this one, I have a KVA rating right here. It's a 30 KVA. And we're going to be able to take that number and size the wires coming into the primary and size the wires coming off the secondary. You can see it says 480 delta to 208y slash 120. And here's the configuration for delta. And here's the configuration for y. And then if you wanted to tap, you can see your taps up here. And the tap configuration has a number code. Hard to see on this. But you can see I can get anywhere from uh, the 400, 14, 432, 450. 480, 492, and 504. So I can get, I can tap with any of those higher voltages. <clears throat> and then it has the ampacity on it, but we usually calculate that. And it also has weight. It's a 300 pound transformer. And if we take uh, another look at what we have on this wall, if we get that far in class, we've got a variety of other transformers. Here's another transformer here from GE, little buck boost transformer, kind of a cool item. We've got some control transformers for industrial applications. We've got another control transformer. We've got some of the smaller transformers, more of the same. And then we've got another transformer over here uh, with a primary and secondary voltage of 480 to 208, or 240, I should say. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, very handy to be able to know how to wire one even more so to be able to calculate the primary and secondary wire size, which is the purpose of the course. 
uh, power load distribution calcs is to make sure that you understand how to calculate the primary and secondary wire size. Here's another transformer that was donated. Similar situation, we've got some taps. Um, I'm kind of missing the paperwork on this one at the moment, but we'd be able to configure those taps. Notice on the bottom, we've got uh, high voltage lugs and the lower voltage lugs, which would then have to say X1, X2, X3, H1, H2, H3, and XO. We could own them out to figure out exactly which ones they are if we don't have a diagram, but I'm sure I can dig it up somewhere. So we got a couple transformers that could get wired up in the lab and uh, test them. So just keep in mind the purpose of this particular video. Let's understand that we're trying to look at what a, the inside of a transformer looks at and what kind of wires, color codes are going to tie on to the letters, XO, H1, all that. And uh, hopefully you got something out of this because when you get in the field, you're going to be wiring a lot of these and I want this to at least be familiar to you. See you at the next video.